been talking about honor. Honor. Today, I was thinking about it and asking God about it. Um, honor is, is kind of extinct virtue today in the 21st century. Um, the concept still holds the power to move us in movies. A display of honor can inspire tears and courage and sacrifice our witness. Review the greatest blockbusters of all time and you'll find honor interwoven into their plots. We applaud it uh, virtual, virtual vicariously, but where but where is honor in our everyday lives? The notion that it could be lived in an ordinary has become foreign in our generation. The notion that it can be lived in the ordinary has become foreign to our generation. That's where we're at. We'll cheer it on in movies that'll bring us to tears inspire us for that moment, but in our ordinary everyday life, we don't see honor much anymore. And I tell you, I come to tell you today, honor is the way to the blessing, to the supernatural blessing. Amen. Pastor was talking about to exist is to transform. To exist is to transform. If you don't transform, you will not exist. You'll just, you'll just be here. No one will ever know anything you've done. Won't remember anything if you don't transform. So someone would know who you are, that you were here. Pastor says it all the time. Why you need to be here if you're not going to do what God tells you to do? Might as well go on and be with the Lord. You know, benefit to the kingdom. To transform is to mature. 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. Turn there. <coughs> to transform is to mature. 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. What does it mean to mature? You say, when I was a child, I speck up as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Everybody there, I'm sorry, is everybody there? I want you to see that in the book. When I was a child, I speck as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's time for us to put away childish things and do the things we know that needs to be done for the Father in this life. So we can have others transform, and we can transform. And then he went on, the pastor went on to say, and to mature is to go on creating oneself endlessly, good or bad. And to mature is to go on create, creating oneself endlessly, good or bad. How many know you can create yourself good or bad? What you're thinking, what you're saying, what you're doing, who you're hanging out with, it's creating you. Your words are creating you. Who do you honor? Who do you respect? Is it Tupac? Who do you respect? Who do you honor? Is it God? Is it the NFL football players? Who do you respect? And if you look at people like those people, Tupac, he died. He died early. And the same should be your end. But when you honor God, you will create yourself endlessly. You will never die out. You'll be like a classic. And who don't want to be a classic? You'll never forgotten. Amen. So who do you honor? Who do you respect? Or do you want respect? 
A lot of that's going on today. Everybody wants respect. Well, let me tell you, I don't respect everybody. I don't respect drug dealers. I don't respect Tupac. I don't respect NFL. I respect your character and who you are. Everybody thinks, you know, just because I'm a person, I'm human, I deserve respect. It says a lot about you. Everybody wants respect. The first step to honor is understand and order. There's an order to this. Honor is what produces the overflow. It has rewards. Honor is what produces the overflow. It has rewards. The pastor talked about that tax lien. That was because of honor. That was supernaturally done. That ain't nothing we did in the natural could ever do. That was because of our honor to our pastors. Nina was because of honor to our pastors. All these great things that happened, earning a million dollars in a year, was because of honor. I ain't saying on paper, earned a million dollars in a year. Company could not finish paying him to the next year. But we got our money, hallelujah. <laughs> and that, that's your problem. That's another year coming. Let's just sign a little promissory note. Amen. <laughs> he became in he he became VP of sales. Pastor Nick has a 12th grade education, both of us. Today he's the CRO of his new job, Chief Revenue Officer. Think about that. That's all because of how we've honored God. God will favor you. I just want y'all to hear me today. You're putting your eggs in the wrong basket. It is all done through honor. I've traveled for a fraction of the cost. You would not believe what I went to Italy, Amsterdam, Rome, Venice, Austria for the amount of money I went for. You would be, no, Pastor Franny, you lying. But Pastor Franny don't lie. But that was God's favor. Amen. Nick would go to work. I went with him. Company paid for the hotel for a week. Paid for his flight. All thing he had to pay was for mine. So I passed the work. I toured. <laughs> Sounds about right. Honor. It was really from honor. And he wanted me to tour. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Where are you going today? I said, I oh, don't know. Help me pick a tour. <laughs> it makes you have plenty of money to go with. Yes. Never was jealous. But happy. Just so happy for me. That's from honoring God and God's way, God's order. Yes. Yes. Amen. It ain't going to make sense to the world. So don't try to make sense of God's order in the natural. It'll never happen. Never happen. Don't even try it. Just do what it says. And he will honor you. But he's honored us. These are all supernatural things. All supernatural things. Ain't no way we could have went for that in the natural. And he, he hide me out. He ain't smuggled me in his little uh, briefcase. They knew where I was going. They wanted me to go. The company knew. Because guess what? Sales went up when Pastor Franny was around. You understand? And man, you sold more. Hallelujah. The boy happy. I'm serious. They knew I was going. Pastor Franny, she going, yeah, I'm taking my baby. He never lied or snuck me in nowhere. He paid for his bill on the company, and he paid for my bill out of our money. Character. God is good. But honor. Where wars come with honor. The Bible tells us to what? Honor our parents, right? Why? He says, so our days will be long, and things will be well with us. Where my teens? Ain't them in here? Hallelujah. You want to have a long life? You want things to go well with you? Honor your parents. It's not for you to raise your parents 
Well, my parents do this. My, that ain't none of your business. Honor the position. It's the same as president. You honor their position, and God will bless you. Yes, he will. He will bless you. That's huge. It is huge. I always honor my mom and my dad. I knew they had my best interest at heart. I always knew that. They have your best interests. Don't you listen to your friends? And most of them ain't your friends anyway. Okay? Friends come along very rarely in this life. Some grown ups think they got friends, ain't friends. So don't listen to your friends. Listen to your parents. Your parents want taking care of you, working for you, providing for you. Why wouldn't they want you to do well? Don't listen to no friend. A lot of times people think see time is harvest is 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 it is honor. And it's kind of, it's a way to the blessing. But the honor I'm talking about, I'm talking about honoring with your life. A lot of people I think now seek God's hand and not his face. And they think, oh, I can do whatever I want to do. I just got a tithe. Sister, I got news for you today, and brother. It don't work that way. All I gotta do is tithe and God will bless me. I don't have to straighten up my life. I don't have to live for him. No. Believe me, he's much smarter than that. And he know all our motives, amen? amen. <laughs> and I know a lot of, like Pastor say, we know a lot of people that tithe are, are totally broke because they don't honor God with their life. And we're going to talk about some of that honor today and what it looked like. And, then, you know, you may be like, hmm, I got to do that. You want to do whatever God tells you to do. That's honor. When you do God's order, you're honoring God. When you do God's order, how he set it up, you're honoring God. Right? Okay. A lot of times, uh, like giving. If you're told to do, well, it's 30. The Bible said it's 30, 6, and 100 fold. When you're told to do, that's head knowledge. 30. When you should do, 60-fold. Then you get your senses in it. Well, yeah, maybe I should be doing this. You know, okay, the Bible says it. But it ain't in your heart to do it. When it get in your heart to do it, a hundred-fold comes back to you. A hundred-fold. Because why? Now you're giving out of honor, and you're giving out of your heart. And guess who else you're going to give that to? Your pastor's. Watch the people that serve the pastor. Hint, hint. Why, I'm serious as a, I'm serious as a heart attack. Watch the people life that truly serve their pastor. But a lot of people here give to me, so into us all the time. Watch their life. Watch the PPAs. Watch the people that has enough humility to serve out in the open. You'd be surprised a lot of people don't have that humility. That's all honor is. Humility. That's all honor is. Some of you wouldn't dare serve out in the open. God is so, because of the honor, because of the humility, God, like I said, blessed, blessed us. Just blessed us. And it was because we sold in the pastor, poor and pastor. Yeah, we tied to the church. We, we did everything the church he asked us to do. But when it came forgiving anything that we wanted to give extra, it went to our man and woman of God. Now, I don't need anything from you. But see, I've already sold seed. I'm already, honor going to come to me because I sold honor. Amen. Somebody going to bless Pastor Frank. Can I get an amen? Yeah. All right, I got a whole bunch of agreement here. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Even without your agreement, Pastor Frank is going to be blessed. <laughs> because I did the order. Yes. I did what he told me to do, right? 
You're going to see what he said about the prophet here in a minute. And I believe that. And when I heard that, the first time I heard the real truth, I had never heard that. The one I had heard of, you give a prophet a drink of water, you said, a prophet's reward. And I was like, whoa. I said, Lord, I can't get nobody a drink of water. But you know what had happened? God is amazing. Pastor Paul was standing one day and he was talking about, you know, I believe I'm going to hire me a chef. I said, a chef? I said, go ahead, Pastor Paul. Hi, a chef? I just broaden my thinking. See, that's what pastors do. They take you to a place of thinking that you never would have normally went to. But when he said, I'm like a chef. Well, you go here and you bad more the scooter. I just never, my mind never went there. You know, you think of a maid. All of us have thought about, I'm going to have a maid, right? Say it. I'm going to have a maid. Yeah, yeah, what you say. But when he said a chef, I mean, that, that blew my thinking up. And I tell you, when I sat there in that seat, I didn't know how, but I knew somehow I would cook for him. I tell you, I, I, some, I don't know, dropped in my spirit that I would cook for them. Then me, being who I was at that time, mm-mm, dude, no. <laughs> what am I thinking? No. And sure enough, I ended up cooking for them. I became that chef. And guess who got that blessing? Yeah. <laughs> Pastor bragging about his lasagna. Because I didn't even talk. Okay, that I didn't even speak to nobody. I was so shy, so just insecure. He bragging to, to his sons about his lasagna. I'm, I'm going to show y'all some real Italian food. See, y'all don't... You know about it, Elizabeth. He stay on you about them beans, right? I'm going to show y'all some real Italian food. Y'all don't know nothing about Italian. I'm going to cook y'all some lasagna. So he goes to work cooking lasagna for the poor family. I'm like, oh, my God. He said, I want you to come to me. I want you to make me one of your peach cobblers, and I want you to make me a salad. I said, okay. So I'm really sweating bullets. Because I know, you would think when I cooked for them, I was cooking for the President of the United States. You better ask my children. They couldn't come in that kitchen. You better not walk in that kitchen with your hair loose. And all of them had hair like this. I'd be like, get out of here. I can just see a piece of hair. Whoa. Just, just go come in here. I mean, can I get some cereal? I hand it to Ask them. Ariel, I hand you some. Don't come in this kitchen. Come around here, they come. Uh uh, uh, get out. <laughs> roll in their eyes, roll all you want. My pastor ain't getting no hair in his food. My hair all tied up. <laughs> but it was honor. Yes. I don't want nothing to go wrong. Well, anyway, lo and behold, sto lo long story short, they tasted the lasagna, but what they wanted to know who made the peace cobble. <laughs> He's still waiting on his accolades <laughs> for his lasagna. Hey, man, what's that lasagna? <laughs> man, it, it was good, but who made that peach cobbler? <laughs> and that's how it all started. That's how it all started. Oh I cook. I didn't want to deliver the food. I didn't want to be nowhere near him. I knew, oh, Lord, no. Did not want to be near them because I knew I don't know nothing about these people. I don't speak in tongues. I don't. I just felt so inadequate when I got there. So I wouldn't deliver the food. The deal was I cooked the food and they could deliver it. <laughs> I cooked the food. He loaded the car and take it to Pastor Paul and Pastor Devil. I'd be looking at my watch. Man, take that long to go over there and deliver some food. Man, the visits got longer, longer, and longer. Nick talking to Pastor Poe. Boy, he come, I be like, what he said? Boy, he tell me what they said. Just, I mean, you think they were, they were like, man, they were, they were like God to us almost. The things they said in the impartation, how it was taken. 
and he'd come back, he'd tell me things that, oh, how he imparted and things they said, and I'd just be just like, wow, you went in their house? You went, when you went, he took you on the boat, and then next day he went on the jet? I'm like, you went, what you said? I didn't say nothing. I just, I mean, just, I mean, I mean, seriously, I'm not kidding y'all. But the level of honor, I, I can't even tell you why. But I know what it produced. My God. All that stuff I talked about, that tax lien, that, all that miraculous. And like, huh? They say it's released. No, yeah, you, you sure you called IRS? I was, no, you didn't call. Release, babe. Released. No. You kidding me, right? I mean, we were scared to call for 10 years. They garnished our wages. We weren't calling and saying nothing. Because they do that again, we were going to be in trouble. Went to the bank, nothing was in the account. Just I got paid. Now, can you say Jesus right there? Mm hmm. All my little babies. I'm like, where the money? Uh, I think the IRS got it. You think? <laughs> you find out something? <laughs> We never opened any mail. I'm sure they told us something, right? <laughs> ah, it's just mail. We love just a bill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. This is the way we live. It was so like a joke. <laughs> but, but the blessings and the wisdom that we learn from them, oh, my God, is just priceless. It's priceless. You know, Pastor Paul talked about it. He said, you know, I'm a pastor to some. I'm not a pastor to all of y'all. When you're a pastor to some woman, they come, they're expecting something. You something to come out your mouth from heaven for them. Amen. And they take that thing, and they apply it to their life. Oh, some of you say, oh, pastor, that was a good word. Oh, my God, that was so good. But I'm not your pastor because it didn't go within. You didn't get something. Maybe I'm not your pastor. You didn't get something. But if you call here, you should be getting something. You should come in that door expecting something Amen. from your study, something that you want answers to in your life. Amen. We, came, we came expecting. And every time, do you know, heaven would download something right through Pastor Paul or Pastor Deborah to us. And we'll look at each other like, man, they must have been in that. Kali, were they in our bedroom? We was just talking about this. And it would blow our minds. The very thing we talked about, answers will come from above. And we've been looking at each other like, no. Yeah. So awesome. Pastor Poe, I remember one time we came into the office and my family was giving me trouble as usual. <laughs> and I was trying to figure out what to do about my mom. My father had died and I wasn't happy about her care or about her money and what they were doing with the, with the money. And uh, I went to talk to them about what I should do. Shy, I was so shy then. Oh, I didn't like going before Pastor Paul. Oh, because he was just a major stretcher. He reminded me so much of a Nick. And because um, he would just say things to you. Just tell your truth. He ain't dress it. He, <laughs> and I, I knew I was kind of, <laughs> he ain't dress it. So I was always kind of shy of him. It just like stare at his face, you know. <laughs> Stay out of his face. I go another way. I see him coming. Hey, brother. Yeah. You know, never just go right past him because he'll stop and talk to you. And I didn't want to talk. And we went to the office. I was really nervous. And he told me, he said, he looked at me. I'm like, oh, boy. And I told him what I was there for, shakingly. He said, you the Joseph of your family. I had heard the story of Joseph. I was like, oh. Okay, but in my mind, I'm Joseph? I'm Joseph? Joseph endured all. Joseph persevered. Joseph being his, in a Phoenix family. And I tell you, it gave me a new identity. That's what your pastors do. They stretch you. They cause you to think and believe like you never believed before. They worthy of their hire. Honor them. If you leave here today and go to another church, honor your pastors. Amen. It's a blessing. It's rewards to honor. Amen. 
Oh, so many rewards to honor. And I could just, man, I tried not to show it on my face, but my spirit was blowing up. I'm Joseph. I didn't see myself as that backwater, little insecure, little, wait a minute. I can endure. I can persevere. Nothing can stop me. Nothing stop They didn't throw me in prison. They may beat me up. Well, I didn't want that. my family to do that to me. But anyway, I was saying, hey, I ain't got nothing that I can't handle. It built my identity. Some money came by. Yo, y'all want to go ahead and, and listen to, oh, Lord, and get the motivational tapes and all the motivation that took stuff out of the Bible and dressed it up and don't tell you it's the word. And you go pay your money to listen to them when God, the pastors he sent you to, that's what they're called to do. Hallelujah. But anyway, anything I could do for them. I, it was an honor for me to cook for them. I could be tired, so tired. I, it was an honor. I messed up a peach cobbler so bad one time, and I always taste them. My mama always told me, you don't let nothing leave your kitchen without tasting it. Well, I had made it so many times, you know, I guess I got a little cocky. <laughs> and she had friends coming that she told all about my peach cobbler. Pastor Cynthia Brazelton, Pastor Judas Mathis. And I'm like... I'm going to cook for, oh my God, all these women, these wonderful giants in faith. Lord. And I just got all excited. Load them, got them done. I had to cook like four of them, I think it was. I mean, it was a room of 15. But I was just so stoked because she told me about her friends and everything was going to be there. Now, they want to taste your cobbler. I cook the cobblers, get them in the car, and the Holy Spirit speaks to me. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. He asked me, I said, oh, God, it's so hot. I got to drive real slow. I mean, because I was already pressed for time. Taste the things. Holy Spirit told me, taste it. I ran in the house. I get a spoon. I get a little bit of the juice. Taste it. It was so bad. I had messed up the measurements of the flavor. Y'all know I went ballistic, right? <laughs> <laughs> I start calling everybody, take it out. Go to the store. I mean, I redid all these peach cobblers. I don't want to tell Pastor Deborah I made a mistake. Oh, no. I could have said, called and said what? I made a mistake and I'm not going to be able to do it. Oh, no. Running around like a chicken with my head cut off, yelling at everybody. Move. Go get me some peaches. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my God, so many bullets. But I just think about go back to the honor now. Now I see why my life has been blessed in the supernatural the way it has. You're blessed according to your honor. Today I still cook for my Pastor Deborah. Pastor Paul's went on, but I still cook. For Pastor Double. We took her food on Thanksgiving. Pastor leaves on Thanksgiving and deliver her food. And I have to cook on Christmas. Still to this day, I honor them. I'm so thankful that I met them, that God made them my spiritual parents. Amen. We still give gifts, blessings. She brought a new house. We brought her a big, what is it? We have a 70 inch, 75, 80 inch TV for her new wall. Amen. Oh, turn to Hebrew 13 and 7. But I think I stayed there too long, y'all. I think I stayed there too long. Oh, I did. Well, let the Lord have his way. It's his program. 13 and 7 says, Remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow. Consider the end of their, own, of their conversation. Look in the Amplified. It says, remember your, leaders and sup remember your leaders and superiors in authority, for it was they who brought you to the word of God. It was Pastor Paul, Pastor Deborah, when I got there, I didn't know nothing. 
oh, that ministry, it fills so many gaps. I used to wonder why the people, the children was poor in Africa. I used to, and God didn't do nothing for them. And Lord, these are just little babies. Well, guess what? Those people did not serve God. They served witchcraft, all types of things. And I couldn't ever figure it out. And as I went and I kept learning, he filled every gap with the word. Every gap, everything I ever thought, he filled it with the word. And I was like, God, you're so good. Anyway, over here it says, uh, uh, 7, it says, observe attentively and consider the man of living, the outcome of their well-spent lives. Consider that. Imitate their faith. I said, you can do it, you can do it. I said, you're going to have a maid. I said, I'm going to have a maid. I said, whatever Pastor Paul said, ain't have nothing. So far from something. But when he said it, I said it. I said that. I ain't yelling out in the church. I said it to myself. Everything he said, I said. Why? The Bible says I gave him a drink of water, have a prophet's reward. Give and be expecting a miracle. We don't even expect miracles. God don't do one for one. He's a multiplier. Amen. Give. Expect a miracle. You don't gonna get for what you believe for. But everything he told us to say, I would say it. I said things they didn't he tell artists to say I said. What's this here? Imitate the faith, that conviction that God exists, that God exists. And it's the creator and the rule of all things, the provider, the bestower of eternal salvation through Christ. And their leaning of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust. Now, that's what we got, absolute trust and confidence. Do you believe, Pastor Nick, have absolute trust and confidence in God? I know he do. I do. Absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and his goodness. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. Did that say amen? And they rose early in the morning and went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Be believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Amen? I believed my prophet. I believed him. I believed him. To the point, you know what? You know, y'all, someone say, you know, how you trust people like that? I believe. You know why? Because I honor God. And when you honor God, you know God ain't going to let nothing happen to you. Amen. Somebody want to take advantage, take advantage. Let them take it. God is for you. He's just going to bring it back round to you. He did that with my family. And he's taking something from me. <laughs> Made more money than I... I <laughs> See, to live abundantly. It's okay. All right? I'm going to talk about Adam. Go to Adam and Eve. We're going to talk about honor. I'm going to show you some people that honor God... What happened? Some people that didn't honor. <laughs> Y'all know about Adam and Eve, right? Yes. But let's look at it a minute. Just one little minute. Turn to Genesis 3, 1, 2, 6. You there? Say amen. amen. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. 
He said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Now there you go right there. She should have never been talking to the, to, the, to, the, to the snake, okay? But of the fruit of the trees, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. He just called God a liar. Now he got a questioning. For God does not know, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm. Oh boy. When the woman saw the tree was good, good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband. Gave, yeah, unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Mm-hmm. Say, mm-hmm, go ahead. Yeah. Then after they did all the eating, they found out, oh, my God, I'm naked. <laughs> They tried to start hiding themselves and putting feed the trees and leaves and stuff together to hide themselves. And then start hide, trying to hide from God. Go with me to 14. So after all this, God want to know, man, what have you done? Woman, what have you done? Man, what have you done? So he curses the, the uh, snake, right? 14. Let's go to 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Look at 13 and Amplified. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, cheated, outwitted, deceived me, and I ate. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the Lord <laughs> said to the woman, <laughs> Oh, and the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you have cursed. You are cursed above all domestic animals and above every wild living thing of the field. Upon the belly you shall go and you shall eat dust and what it contains all the days of your life. So that's why the snake is slithering on the ground. And I will put intimacy enmity between you and the woman and between the offspring and her offspring. He will bruise and tread your head under underfoot and you will lie in wait and bruise her heel. 16 to the woman he said, this was hers I will greatly multiply your grief and your suffering and pregnancy and pains of childbirth childbearing. So every, all the women say thank you Eve. Thank you. Yeah. Before that probably there would be no pain. With spasms of distress, you will bring four children. Mm, mm, mm. Ugh. Yet your desire and craving will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. So I guess at one point, they wouldn't have ruled over us. Over us. Let's go look at Adam. And to Adam he said, because you have listened and given heed to the voice of your wife and have eaten. Because he listened to who? Uh-huh. And have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it. The ground is the ground, not them are cursed. The ground is under a curse because of you. And sorrow... And toil shall you eat of the fruits all the days of your life. Thorns and also thistles shall they bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. And in the sweat of your face shall you eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are and to dust you shall return. You see what happened when they didn't do God's order? We were made to be the help meet. And man was supposed to lead. He got in trouble for doing what his wife told him. She got in trouble for trying to lead. Knowledge. Knowledge. Think about that for a minute. Knowledge. 
We thirst for knowledge. Knowledge is power. But without honor, it's nothing. It's trouble. Today, that's why our homes are broken up now, divorce. God has given us an order. We don't want to do the order. We want to tell them what to do. They want to sit passively by and let men and let us do everything. Don't want to tra train the children. They want to, oh, yeah, she got it. God gave you to set that course, the man. And we're supposed to help keep it set. And when the man walk off, oh, you don't have to make that bed. Just, just, just leave it. We enforce what they say. I know women don't like this, but you know what? I want to make something real clear. God called us all to do great exploits. Men and women. It has nothing to do with gender. But he wanted done his way. In his order, not yours. That's the difference. It's not that I can't do. A pastor Nick won't push me up to do. But that didn't start that way. It came to me because of honor for God. And showing him the way. Women, we are to show them we are an example to our husbands. It sounds backwards. But in First Peter, he talked about our conduct and our conversation. If the word on work can change them, we got power. We just look for the power in the wrong place. Think about that. Oh, I can get past Nick doing anything I want. All I got to say is I won't. And it's done. Why? Because I showed him what it was like to honor God. I pleased him because of God. Not because of what he, who he was, because he wouldn't have got nothing. <laughs> but because God said to. Right? That's where the rewards come. Then him watching me learn to honor. He got with Pastor Poe. Now he knew how to honor. You're not going to always be where you at now. No, you're not. God's about a God of increase. Honor him. He'll take your place. Go to, um, ooh, um, but anyway, they got kicked out the garden, kicked out the presence of God. It took Jesus to come back on the cross to get us back in his presence. So now we're restored back. Amen? Amen. Amen. But um, I just want to talk to uh, the men. It don't mean that you lord over us. You know, Christ died for the church. Died for the church. You treating us right, we'll love you. Oh, boy. It won't, there is nothing we won't do for you. So if we ain't doing for you, you need to turn up your love. Hallelujah. Boy, it got quiet. You need to turn up the love. <laughs> turn up the love. Now maybe come stand in your face and say it. <laughs> turn up the love. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> know y'all like to hear that about we the help me. Yeah, we got to have something to help. I'm going to leave that alone. It's Sunday. Anyway, but that's why we have so many marriages and divorce. People won't do God's order. And you have power in your place. God has given us power. We have influence. We have, boy, we got, do we have influence? I've seen some men that just, I mean, just fold in front of women. We got all kind of influence. We got influence. You understand? I'm going to leave that right there. But anyway. <laughs> well, we got to use our influence the way God tells us to use our influence. Because you use it the other way, he calls it wickedness. Yes. All right. So, but today we have a thirst, for, a thirst for knowledge. Because we think it will create us endlessly. It will not create you endlessly. Uh, knowledge is power. But like I said, without honor, without humility, you will not walk in the supernatural power of God. You're bad more to school than when you educated and you walk in humility. But when you ain't got humility, you're just an educated fool. <laughs> yeah. 
And people, they think they're humble. I notice if you go to most people, they think they're humble. We have a lot of false humility. You go around and tell, oh, you're so sweet. You're so nice. You're just nice to everybody. When you get home, you want to raise hell. That's false. A lot of false humility going around. Humility is a modest, low view of one's own importance, not self-importance. You can value yourself. God wants us to value ourselves. He gives us value. But it's a modest, humility is a modest, a low view of one's own importance. You know, when you think you're important, when you think you know everything, That's humility. Put others' interests before your own. That's humility. That's also love. Extravagant love, you're always trying to please them in a godly way. I mean, you're not going around pleasing everybody, but if it's right, your husband, your wife, you want to please them. And you know what? It'll come back to you. I'm telling you, it will come back to you. Harriet. Anybody seen Harriet, a movie? I thought that was a great movie for humility. This woman, my, hundreds of miles to go back after she saved herself, but God had saved her and took her through. She went back for others. I mean, had traveled hundreds of miles jumping in water and hiding and running and not eating. I couldn't have done. Well, see, some people are built for certain things. Don't be, people are called to certain things. She was born to do that. I'd probably be on the ground growling, Lord, I need food. <laughs> I need it. No. <laughs> she put that little stuff in that bag and take off. I'm like, that ain't gonna be enough food. That's my mind was thinking. I'm like, girl, you better put some more in that bag. <laughs> no, uh She put a few things, she took off. I'm sitting there like, she going to starve. But she didn't. God almighty, she was born to do it. And do you know what else? The white people that helped her, that hit us. That's humility. If they had caught them doing that, at that point, they'd been the same as Harriet, dead. She thought of someone else's interest before. and safety. That's true humility there. Because if they had a call to, my Lord, and them too. So we got to be kept. See all this little rhetoric today? Don't buy to that mess. They want to keep everybody. <laughs> everybody need everybody. We couldn't have done it without them. God laid that on their hearts. And she made an underground railroad. They made, because without their help, she couldn't have never. Oh, man, every time they about to head off, my heart just go, do, 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 oh, God, go get her. Do, 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 do. My heart would speed up. I was on the edge of my seat. And then I just looked apart, and she prayed, and God took her across that water. She went back for some, and they, I just wanted to get them. I wanted to beat them with a belt. Go on, cross the water, people. I'm not getting in there. Start arguing with them like, oh, God, the dogs are coming. They're arguing with them. <laughs> Just leave them, Harriet. <laughs> I'm going to on the heads of my seat. And she had to walk across that water to show them that God was leading. Then they, they, here they come in the water. <laughs> mm -hmm. What I got to do to prove to you? I done went and came back for you. Do what I tell you. <laughs> then brought babies. The baby cried like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> give it milk. Give it something. <laughs> oh, man. It was a great movie, though. I think everybody should go to it. I think it's a good picture about humility, movie about humility. Turn to Matthew 23 and 12. Ooh. I'm not doing good on time. Matthew. Twenty-three, twelve. If you're there, say amen. Mm-hmm. 
No. Mm. Why that don't look right? 23 and 12. Yep, that don't look right. 12. Oh, yeah. And who, whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Y'all see that in the red? Yeah. Who said it? Jesus. So when you humble, what he going to do? He going to honor you. And when you abase and you proud, what he going to do? Let's see. Y'all don't know. Let's lean the empathize. Whosoever exalt himself with laughter. No, I'm sorry. Put my glasses. Whosoever shall exalt himself with haughtiness and empty pride shall be humbled. Brought low. You're coming down. And whosoever humble himself who has a modest opinion of himself and behave accordingly shall be raised to honor. Ain't that awesome? Amen. Hallelujah. He said he take the simple to confound the wise. Now, knowledge is good, but honey, it ain't everything. It ain't good. And some people use it, you know, for their value. For hey, I'm not telling nobody not to get educated, but let me tell you something. When you honor God, he'll go way past education because wisdom is, uh, ooh, wisdom, you see things that the others won't even see. Confrontation brings about growth. Honor God by telling the truth. Christians walk around quiet, timid, cowardly, won't confront. A lot of times we think that's meekness. That's weakness. Being humble is not walking around with your head down. <laughs> like my daddy used to do. We on the restaurant. Everybody came in the door. I tell you, he built one heck of a restaurant showing honor. You better say thank you, and you better say it at least three times before they leave, and you better say it real loud. Build a, build a business, make over a million dollars a year. Little old black man couldn't read or write. He wasn't little. His name was Big John. But anyway, he could not read or write. Left an inheritance to his children's children. He was a man of honor. Daddy was a man of honor. He honored everybody. People loved him. Made everybody feel special. You came through that door, you were treated special. I don't care what you had on, what you didn't have on, you <laughs> he would get you. Honor something, man. Honor's powerful. But it's not to walk around like I used to when I first got revealing truth. I want us to hold our head up high. But he wants us to help others and be there for others, have interests of others. He don't want us looking all sad and quiet like we all, you know, know. And, you know, you say something. If you don't know, fine, don't. You don't want you pretending either. But that's not meekness. That's weak. Meekness is standing up, telling truth in love. Because confrontation brings about growth. Sometimes we say things, Pastor Nick, and I, you may not like it, but when you go in the Holy Spirit, you think about it, you'll see. You have to trust God to walk in, in humility. He got your back. Some people may take advantage of you, but God will make another way to bless you. Turn to Psalms 23 and 1. I want to read that in the message. Uh, Forget that. Y'all read that on your own. I am so far behind. I want to go with Abraham and talk about Abraham. Abraham honored God. Man, Abraham was great. I just, I'll just paraphrase and tell you the story. It's in Genesis. You can go to Genesis 14, 12 through 24. Abraham uh, took Lot, his nephew, with him, right? And uh, he got into... Lot was always getting into something. Lot had to be rescued out of two things. These armies and stuff got into a fight, and they took Lot hostage. So he had to go, and I'm going to read it. 
Genesis 14. That paraphrasing ain't working. I'm going to read it real fast. I got about seven minutes. Genesis 14. I want to show you what honor looked like. We looked at Adam and Eve and what dishonor looked like and what it brought. Turn to Genesis 14. 14, 12 through 24. That's probably be it. 14, 12. If you're there, say amen. Let's read. And they took Lot. Okay, so this is the, they appear, all these Sodom and Gomorrah kings, all of them fighting. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dealt in Sodom and his goods and departed. And they came, one, that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dealt, dwelt in the land of Mari, the Amorite, brother of that school, and brother Arari, and they were confederate with Abraham. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, and him and he and his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. So he saved them all. They saved them all. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of, I can't say that, Chesamerlar and the kings of and the kings that were with him, and the valley of Chevelle, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Y'all see that say the pastor? the pastor? And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, professor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him the tithes of all. Tithe, y'all see that? And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted my hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the professor of heaven and earth, that I would not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet that I would not take anything that is thine lest thou, uh, lest thou shouldest say I have made Abram rich you see that he didn't want to take none of them spoils they had got spoils from the fight and, and he took and gave tithes uh, to the priest, Melchizedek. And Melchizedek tell you what, I'll take the persons and you take all the stuff. And he said, no, I'm going to tell you something because I will never have you saying that you made me rich. God made me rich. Whoa, I love it. Oh, I love it. Now that's honor. Tell me that ain't honor to God. You see all that gold sitting there? You start thinking about, man, I could buy me some more cattle. Let me give you a bigger tent. <laughs> More bread. <laughs> well, now I did, but a Bentley, maybe a Porsche. You start looking at all that? No. He said, I love this. He said, I would not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me. Adna, Esco, Esco, Mamre, let them take their portion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talk about honor. 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy exceedingly, exceedingly, exceedingly great reward. Amen. He finna get a reward now. Not only reward, exceedingly great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, thou would, what would thou give me? Seeing I go childless. And the steward of my house is Elsner of, De of Demarcus. So basically, um, he's saying here, Lord, what could you possibly give me? What gonna, whatever I get going to be left to this guy that's in my house because I don't have an heir. And Abram 
said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bower shall be thine heir. He's saying, I'm going to give you your own heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. So you're not just getting one son. My Lord. So I'm glad they look at the stars. <laughs> See if you can number them. How many descendants? Talk about exceedingly abundantly. Amen. And it takes patience. And humility brings patience. Because it was some years before he saw that. Remember, he listened to his who? Wife, and she tried to do what? In a fear with God's plan and got an Ishmael. But look how he was blessed with healing. Even though he got off, he made some mistakes, he was committed to the end. He is the father of faith. And we got to remember our forefathers. You know why? They're landmarks, they left principles. Why do you think we got them out there on that wall? Why do you think they're out there on the wall? It's honor. I get to read about things, the books they've written, and seeing the mighty moves of God, the supernatural, on they natural. I get wisdom, I glean from them. It's all honor. That's the worst thing ever happened to this country, a fatherless country. A fatherless country. When John the Baptist baptized Jesus, he was a mere man. But you know what? The father was set, setting a precedence. Jesus was setting a precedence. I had, he had to come through Mary to be here on the earth. He could have just showed up and said, hey, I'm here. And this is done with, you understand? Because I'm God. But that ain't the earthly order, is it? You got to be born. So he, Mary had Jesus. Now we got a flesh human man on the earth. God is on the earth. Right? He was establishing an order. Our forefathers have established, Pastor Paul established orders. He said, I will not quit, therefore I cannot be defeated. That is embedded in me. That is embedded in the Pastor Nick. Before that, I was a quitter. Man, this ain't working. We tried. <laughs> he put that in me. He, all the things he said, he said so many. They actually got a book of wisdom, book of legacy he wrote. All the little gems he used to say. Pearls of wisdom. That when I don't know, who, when I'm down, that identity comes to me. I know who I am and I know where I come from. I don't quit. He went the distance. Pastor Paul went the distance. He served God till he left. My daddy was in a wheelchair. He served God till he left. He preached from that wheelchair. Do you know how impactful that is on me? That's a good time to say, I ran my race, I'm, I'm ill. Abraham honored God. He got the full reward. And when I think about how God's blessed me, it's not because of Voxel, it's not because of e AT and T, it's not because whoever y'all work for, y'all trying to get on with network, work for, get a pension, I don't know. But it wasn't because of my degree, because I don't have one. It was because of the honor, bring God and God's way of doing and being right. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. There's one more thing I got to do, Holy Spirit. 
There's a scripture. My beloved son, who I'm well pleased. Yes. I don't see it now. Okay. I guess I'm not supposed to read it. It's not here. And I know I put it here. Maybe I did. Hmm. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, right now, Father, for this day. I just thank you, Father, right now for everyone that's here, Lord. I just thank you, Father, for your word today, Lord. Your word on honor, Father. Oh, Father, your order, your way, Father. I just thank you, Father, today, Father, that they'll see his rewards honoring you, Lord. And they won't take honor lightly, Lord. And they won't think honor's being pushed back or pushed down, but honor is actually on the way to the blessing. And I just thank you, Father, for that right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. amen.